Travis Wayne Goodzo. So uh, last night I had 828 subscribers. This morning I have 827. <clears throat> and it appears to be from a uh, subscriber for a little while now. I uh, did a video uh, titled 17 March 1970 prophesied birthday of Joseph Smith's Emmanuel Amen Christ. And a bit of a redundancy in there, wasn't there? But Mormons don't understand unless I give the different translations. And so here was a particular person's comment. I love you, widow's son. Into the time space I've traveled. Some I've found who had conquered the ether. Strains of harmony filled all the air. Keep thou not silent when evil is spoken for truth. For truth, like sunlight, shines above all. Keep up the good works. Darkness is only a veil. That was more coherent than most of hers. <laughs> I've had to delete the majority of her comments because it seems like she gets drunk and then makes a comment on my channel. <laughs> and so this was this morning that YouTube flagged. Joseph Smith's most eligible successors. So she's going back to my older videos. She's not just sticking with whatever new stuff comes up, as most of you are doing. <laughs> so she says, and sure enough, it was late last night. You sound like a jealous baby male who cries he should have married chick. I'm out. Good luck with your new cult. So, she's gone. You're gone. Looking back on the latter days, yeah, looking back, Latter days are ending. This is the final year. And so, yeah, I'm able to do a retrospection. <clears throat> yeah, I can move those. I'm not going to be doing a video, at least not until we get closer to the time. But those I have to relabel. I uh, was miraculously freed in 2014 from the church's imprisonment of me. No, I didn't go to a legitimate prison. I was not tried. I didn't plead guilty. Hell no. I didn't do anything wrong. It was the church who did something wrong. And I called them out on it. Filed a petition for redress of grievances in the state of Utah under orders of the church, being compromised, locked me away for six years of my life, disappeared me, tried to erase me from history. And then I found out that the church had rewarded the person who was the key to making that happen. The church paid. And, uh, paid to have me assassinated during my disappearance. So yes, it was a miracle I got out. I wasn't supposed to. And I remember seeing news of the lunar eclipse for Passover there in in uh, the beginning of 
2014. And I went, oh, that's interesting. So I wonder if a prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is going to die. Because my education taught me about this belief system of the ancients. And when Faust died, yeah, I saw it with the lunar eclipses. And then Hinckley died. Oh, interesting. And then it wasn't, it was like a last year or two years ago when I, I think it was two years ago, <clears throat> that I went back revisited those as I was doing the chart for uh, the lunar eclipses of the presidents of the church and uh, ran a test to check for others who had died and I noticed that Faust and Hinckley shared a, a common uh, conjunction theme heavenly sign in the heavens theme, I guess, you can say. A pattern that connected the two of them together. So I thought that was very interesting. But uh, nothing, nobody died in 2014. So I thought, oh, I guess it isn't real. It's just something that they made up. They don't really, it's just, you know, one of those things. It's an oral myth, tradition, but has no basis in reality and science. <clears throat> Just religious symbolism. And, uh, and so then the harvest time comes along, the end of the year, and another one's announced. And I'm going, oh, two. Wow, okay, so we'll have to run a test here and see if two prophets of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints die. And uh, the regular time frame that I allow of one month came and went, and, and yeah, I gave it an extra two months. Nope, still nothing. So I had to let it go can't keep pushing something that isn't true no matter how much it would be exciting to have it come true and so then uh, springtime comes along again and then I find out what's really going on why didn't they tell me in the beginning it's a tetrad <coughs> And then this one, which also was on Passover, as the ones at harvest time was during Feast of Tabernacles of the Jews, was on conference morning on Saturday. And so, yeah, I was, I was uh, amazed. I was in new territory here. Nobody else in the world knows about this. Uh, only the one teacher who told me about solar eclipses being understood as deaths of the kings or the collapse of government, telling the story of uh, an old Assyrian king who went to war against another kingdom in the Far East and uh, a solar eclipse occurred. But uh, nobody knew to apply to lunar eclipses for religious authorities, and especially to apply them in a modern context. And so that's what I was doing. I'm the only person who was doing that. Nobody else on the face of the earth knows to do this. And so, yeah, I was paying very close attention, very curious to see what would happen. 
and then Perry Pecker Scott. <laughs> and uh, the changing of the guard for the presidency of the Twelve. In other words, a new runner-up for the president of the church. Nelson would be the one to replace Monson. And I remember hearing a little later on uh, that uh, Chad Daybell was among the Mormons who were trying to claim that that Tetrad was a sign in the heavens for the latter days. That it's finally here. And <clears throat> Uh, all these Mormons were getting a spiritual witness that this is it. Jesus is coming. It's going to be so awesome. We're finally going to be proven true to all the world. They who mocked us will see their shame because the Mormon church is going to be proven true. Not just in that it's one South Park episode where everybody ends up in hell and they're asking, well, who is the true church? The Mormons. Mormons are the true church. you don't know how exceedingly hilarious that is because Mormons don't believe in a heaven and hell <laughs> they believe in three kingdoms of glory <laughs> and so the Mormons are true but they're false because they got the afterlife wrong <laughs> hilarious <laughs> So, President Watson comes out. <laughs> and, and tells the Mormons in a First Presidency statement that no, your spiritual witness is wrong. And, uh, <clears throat> and so all these Mormons who are, you know, for generations have been waiting for the second coming, for the latter days. And uh, I had even talked with a, a patriarch who gives patriarchal blessings and I'm assuming would talk about the latter days and the coming of Jesus. And yet he's telling me that, you know, his generation believed that that was when Jesus was coming and he didn't come and was saying that Jesus isn't likely to come for another children's, children's, children's generation. You know, If you don't want people to know you have no authority, best keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and, uh, and so for me, it wasn't a matter about a spiritual feeling, because I'm science-based. I don't give in to emotional blackmail from a drunk girl. If she's going to be weird and get angry with me, bye-bye. Want nothing to do with you. You got to be nice. Got to communicate. 
See, I have no idea where she lives in the world. I can't go traveling around to visit her. If she doesn't live here, close by, and most likely will have to come see me more often because it costs money to travel. So if we can't, if I can't walk to a designated location to meet up, or it's too expensive for her to travel, ain't gonna happen. So yeah, I'm not hopeful of getting my third times the charm. And uh, and so Chad Daybill, you know, he had a near-death experience. So it was more than just a spiritual witness for him. And he decided to go off the deep end. He knew better and went off the cliff and took Lori Vallow with him as murder was involved. Enforcing your beliefs with murder. That's what Mormons do. With ver murder, with violence, with threats. As the case in point from the, the woman who commented. It just doesn't make any sense to me why people do that. How people can think that committing crime makes you right. See, I've all these years doing my videos, it's just a matter of it's up to you. I've tried all different types of ways to present my videos, and there were ways that people didn't appreciate. And they let me know it. They were trying to tell me how to run my channel and how to give my presentations. Rather than doing their own channel and doing the presentation the way they're telling me to do it. Again, they're people trying to take away my agency. Telling me how to live, how to be, how to behave, how to feel, how to believe. That is also wrong. You are not giving me my agency. I give you yours. You don't have to watch my videos. You don't have to believe whatever I say. That's up to you. You get to choose. And with the, the website, it makes it easier for you to choose even though YouTube purposely tries to force you to watch what they want you to watch with their recommendations <sighs> because it's it's tough because I don't fit in any category on YouTube and so YouTube always recommends the wrong thing for me and uh, only when I'm signed in am I allowed to say, don't recommend this channel. But in the beginning, when I was doing YouTube videos, it was about my Paleo-Hebrew and Egyptian research. I had to restore it after being destroyed for those six years that the church had locked me up and disappeared me tried to erase me from history and uh, because they knew that the information I had would expose them as frauds and destroy them and so they cannot allow me to become popular they cannot allow my information to get out there that's why they've been attacking me all these years 
even though I was born and raised Mormon and was faithful and true, and that's how I knew what I knew. It's because I followed the Book of Mormon's process for learning truth. Science-based, not spiritual witness feelings. And so I, I, I can't comprehend how Mormons stick with spiritual witness feelings, refusing to use their public education science-based knowledge. And I didn't grow up in Utah's public schools, so I don't know, maybe they got psychology that has infiltrated all of the classes to uh, turn them into fake sciences to uh, disqualify them as legitimate science because that's what BYU is doing with the church using psychology in their classes multiple ones I'm, I'm, I'm a witness to medical doctors who use psychology the legal system uses psychology and those are two areas where you cannot use psychology because you will do irreparable harm with psychology and unfortunately here in Utah psychology reigns supreme and the church controls it with their excommunication of Natasha Helfer as she went against her education to utilize science-based medical information for her clients and the church excommunicated her for it you can't do that can't use science the church is anti-science which is why they don't like my work because it's science it exposes the church because they're anti-science they're anti-science because they're not true. <clears throat> and so then I, I was just doing my videos on Paleo-Hebrew and Egyptian work, that, trying to teach people about how to do it, giving it away for free. I did find, uh, when I got married a second time, at our reception, there was a guy who worked at Amazon uh, who uh, screens books for publication and saying that people can do it for free. And uh, so I had to check on it myself, found out, oh, okay. So I had to figure out how to do it for free. It was a little bit complicated. It's not as easy as I would have liked it to have been. The presentation part of the situation was tough to figure out. But, uh, yeah, I'm now worldwide known for Paleo-Hebrew, mostly. That's the popular one of mine. And so despite the church's efforts to silence me on this, they failed. I am literally known worldwide. Thanks to Amazon and then academia. <clears throat> but Mormons would comment that I'm not allowed to do translation work. Only the president of the church is allowed to do translation work. Ex-Mormons would say I'm not allowed to do translation work because Joseph Smith was a fraud. <laughs> Dear God, guys.
It's not the two extremes. It's a completely new paradigm. <clears throat> and that's what I've been pushing lately. Is that we're not Christian. See, Mormons use Christian interpretation to justify all the criminal activity of the church. Because Jesus orders it. So therefore, it's not really a crime. It's not really disobeying the laws of the land. Article of Faith number 12. Whereas ex-Mormons and critics say it proves the church is false. <sighs> Using Christianity, saying the church isn't Christian because they're committing crimes, they're frauds, they're lying. Therefore, they're not Christian. And nobody stops to think Joseph Smith was learning of the Jews. It's a whole new paradigm. That's not an in-between grayscale area of Mormon view versus not Mormon view using Christianity. It's on a completely new measurement scale. It's called a paradigm shift. And I can't get either side to understand this for the most part. When both sides clearly have read and know, especially when they watch my videos and I put it there at the beginning and mention it in the script in the video, First Nephi chapter one verse two. Nephi says, "I'm writing this book that you are reading in the learning of the Jews." And Mormons go Christian <laughs> and. Ex-Mormon former critics, Christian, and it's just so frustrating. And so, yeah, we're going over the latter days now because we're in the final year because uh, the prophecies included dates of when they were to occur. They were encoded. There is a literal Bible code because uh, many people had suspected that there was a Bible code over the centuries, but nobody ever actually figured out a Bible code from it. And, and then you get Freemason involvement with the King James Version and so then again the coding comes up again and it's right there for everyone to see in the book of Revelation chapter 12 and chapter 19 because once you got chapter 12 down the rest it's just a matter of what comes next so you keep going on your star chart into the future to find the others then the one in 19 is the final end of it. And so John's revelation gives us the beginning and the end dates for the latter days. And so all of the prophecies for the latter days now all fit within that time frame that John gave us. So the birth of Christ, that's the start of the ministry, start of the latter days. <clears throat> and it's in the Book of Mormon. Because the Book of Mormon, learning of the Jews, not Christian interpretation. And so, yes, the Book of Mormon is a warning voice. And as a scientist, I keep trying to confirm and have established it as a fact. Because of what I learned and discovered from real church history. And again, it's the same situation. You have Mormons who believe the lies of church history, 
and say, well, he's the founder of our church. So what he did is not a crime. What he did is not witchcraft, because it's of God. And critics and ex-Mormons, he's a fraud. He's a fake. He's trying to make money. He's a scam artist. He's a witch. Burn the witch. Nobody gets it, because they use the wrong paradigm. Put the learning of the Jews, and all of a sudden it all makes sense. And you understand exactly what he's doing, and you understand how true he is, how accurate he is, how accurate the Book of Mormon is. Because like I said, we're in the final year. Everything predicted, prophesied, has happened. And so why would it all of a sudden not happen now with the last year? That's not the case. But again, as a scientist, I've developed the theory. I've got past confirmations. And so it there's a high probability of success when I run the test, which is time. Waiting for the specific dates of when these things are supposed to happen. Just like I did with the lunar eclipses back in 2014. So, It's sad that Mormons will not believe. They will not change their thinking to the learning of the Jews. That it has to be Christian. And I'm the enemy, therefore. And ex-Mormons, former Mormons, not Mormon critics. Joseph Smith has to be the fraud. It has to be a con. This church has to be a cult. They don't get it that this church is not Joseph's church. That Brigham Young did not succeed Joseph Smith. He stole Joseph's church. He stole Joseph's scriptures. And replaced it all. Christian interpretation. And so Joseph's Christ became Jesus. And I can't get through to anybody on either side, as apparently those who stick with me for a while eventually give up. And I remember there were a lot of impatient people at the beginning as well. I was impatient. I wanted freedom in Zion. Because we were told that Zion will be the only safe place in the world. And we don't have Zion. Therefore, there is no safety, refuge, and peace. And here you have Nelson getting up at the pulpit of conference telling you that Jesus will give you peace. Jesus will heal you. And Mormons don't see it because they're not using the learning of the Jews. When you use the learning of the Jews, you see this church for what it is. The great and abominable church with the great and abominable Jesus Christ. An idol god. And so... Despite all my best efforts all these years to try different techniques and presentations, I, I, I failed overall. I mean, yeah, there's that scripture, 
if you've saved one, how great shall be your reward? No, no. I'm saving a few guys <laughs> where I'm left alone. Remain alone. That's a failure. Because the secret of life is a man and woman getting along, uniting as one. And so I can't have a spiritual witness feeling hope that is not rational, that only sets me up for greater failure. I have to be realistic and the woman this morning made that very clear. And so, yeah, Joseph Smith warned of this. The earth will be entirely wasted at his coming. utter destruction and so despite my warning you in advance of things that were going to come they happened it's not a matter of just listening to my videos you have to actually do something about it when I tell you you're gonna have floods that means you've got to prepare for the flooding. Otherwise, the floods come and you have to do the cleanup. You have to throw out all the damaged material. Because you didn't prepare. And then the bugs would kind of come. And I warn you about the economy. I warn you about what the church is plotting to do. And you don't stop them. You don't raise your voice in protest. You did it for others. You don't do it for me. See, even the bishop who uh, started the Protect LDS Children movement, he was only interested in getting my story that supported his cause. He had no interest in actually protecting children because the church is still abusing children as I let him know about it and he ignored me. He was only interested in, in getting the bishops to read from a list of questions and he got it and that was it. He had no interest in protecting the children. And that's heartbreaking because it was all about how the church had wronged him and excommunicated him because he simply asked that such would be done. He had no desire to pursue the church further to expose them for what they're, who they are. And Kate Kelly why aren't you still leading the protest? You've been silenced on a website now, I guess. I don't hear about you in the news. You're not leading protests anymore. The church is still abusing women. Why have you stopped? All because the church allows women and missionary sisters to wear pants? Because they lifted the veil? Because they had Eve quote from the selections from the Book of Moses? That was the big con. They knew you guys aren't studying your scriptures. And so they would give Eve the role that she says in the selections from the Book of Moses and made you believe that it's all new lines. <laughs> And then you totally missed the law of chastity change. 
where Mormon wives have to divorce their husbands to allow him to marry other women. Nelson ordered it. Why aren't you protesting this? The Joseph Smith papers have come out by the church that tells you that women are supposed to have priesthood and priesthood office. Why did you give up? See, with all the abuse that I've taken from the church, with all the threats to my life, having to go to the emergency room multiple occasions, I've never given up. They have to murder me to stop me. Because I will never give up. Because my knowledge is science-based. That's why the church sees me as the threat. They don't do what they do to me to other ex-Mormons who've become popular for being excommunicated. Because they're not a threat. Because they're using a Christian paradigm to interpret the church. Not a Jewish paradigm. And that's the big trap. Is because when you use a Christian paradigm, even though you left the church because you disagreed with polygamy, disagreed with translation, disagreed with patriarchal abuse, and lies at Harvard, death threats to LGBTQ, if Jesus is real, according to your Christian paradigm, and there's always that nagging question, is Jesus the head of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? That these prophets are just mortal, weak men. That when Jesus comes, you'd go back to the church? That's just wrong thinking, guys. Learning of the Jews. So, I'm talking too long now. Talking to an empty screen, aren't I? <sighs>